Hello everyone friends. Today, I'm going to talk about a movie called One Day of the End of the World. A young and cynical businessman, Claudio Verona, is heading to the office as usual. At the entrance, he is met by a young intern, Sylvia, who is trying her best to please this guy. A man who is greedy for women notes her initiative and informs her that she has been accepted into the staff. On his way to his office, Claudio enters the elevator, where he accidentally meets Marta. There had been a relationship between the young people for several months, but the girl decided to break up with the boss due to the fact that her boyfriend proposed to her. Besides, the lover is married, and the supporting role does not suit her. Claudio tries to convince Marta that only he can give her real feelings, but she rudely makes it clear to the man that her decision is final and not subject to discussion. When the ex-lover comes out on his floor, the businessman answers his wife's call. Lorena anxiously reports that there have been many reports in the news about mass riots on the streets of the city. At this point, the elevator gets stuck and Claudio ends the conversation. After reporting the breakdown, he calls his assistant Sarah and asks her to detain an important client, to whom he is in a hurry to meet. After spending more than half an hour in captivity, the man receives a message that Santi did not wait for him and is going to go about his business. Verona becomes furious and asks the dispatcher to give him the phone number of the repairman. When he calls them, he hears them start screaming loudly, and then the connection is cut off. Realizing that help is not in a hurry, the man tries to open the doors on his own. He only manages to open the doors a few centimeters when Lorena calls. She reports that someone is knocking very insistently on the door of their apartment. The woman is very scared, also because the landline phones do not work and it is impossible to call the police from a mobile phone. The husband recommends that his wife lock herself in the bedroom and promises to send an assistant to sort everything out. A couple of minutes later, a call comes from Lorena again. She talks about the news that is broadcast on television. People on the street seem to have gone crazy and are rioting. The authorities believe that this is some kind of terrorist attack. After hanging up the phone, Claudio sees through the crack of the door how Marta is begging him for help but something unknown drags her out of sight of the man. He wonders what is happening outside until the disfigured Marta and another employee of the company appear in the crevice. They have turned into zombies and are now trying to pull a terrified man out of the elevator to feast on fresh flesh. After dialing the number of her assistant Stefan, who is supposed to come to his wife, Verona tells about the horror she has just experienced. In response, the man calms the boss, but at this point, the connection is cut off. The completely desperate businessman presses the dispatcher's call button again, but he reports that he cannot contact the repair team in any way. Claudio hears terrible screams coming from the other end of the line, and then everything goes quiet. Trying to get through to at least someone, the man approaches the crack in the door and falls into the hands of the zombie Martha. He manages to escape. To escape, he tears off the handrail and kills the woman, and so that the corpse does not lie in front of his eyes pushes him away with the same handrail. Taking out papers from his briefcase, the man begins to fastidiously cover the bloodstains that got inside the cabin. A few minutes later, he sees a frightened Sylvia. Together they try to push the elevator doors wider to let the girl inside, but when she hears that someone is approaching, she runs further down the corridor. At this moment, an infected man appears in the doorway. He bloodthirstily stretches his arms towards the prisoner of the elevator but suddenly someone hits him on the head. It was Sylvia who came back to help the boss. However, she herself cannot escape, because a crowd of zombies pounces on her. Picking up his mobile, Claudio goes online and sees that all the news is about a massive infection of people. He dials his wife's number and exhales with relief when he hears her voice. Lorena is very scared, because she saw with her own eyes how zombies attacked a reporter. At this moment, Monsters break into the woman's apartment, and the man is forced to listen to her last calls for help on the phone. A few hours later, an escaped employee appears in the hallway. He asks to get inside the elevator, but the doors are jammed, and they cannot be fully opened. Verona looks devastated as another living person dies in front of his eyes. When a crowd of zombies begins to break into the elevator, Sarah appears at the end of the corridor. Claudio tries to distract the monsters on himself but they rush towards a new victim, and the man watches in horror at the next death of a man. Turning on the news release on the phone, the man sees that the wrath of heaven has descended on the city, because something incredible is happening around.
the lights turn off in the building, and after a while, a man from the special forces appears in front of the elevator. Claudio is glad that help has come to him, but he upsets him. He came alone because he cannot get in touch with the headquarters. Marcello leaves him a walkie-talkie and a gun, and he goes to look for a shield to turn on the electricity. When the fighter leaves, Verona listens with bated breath to everything that he describes to him on the radio. The whole building is littered with furniture and covered in blood, but the man manages to gradually move towards the goal. After a few minutes, the lights in the building turn on. Claudio sees that the elevator doors have moved slightly, but something prevents them from opening. At this moment, zombies appear in the hole. Remembering all Marcello's instructions, he takes a pistol and starts shooting at the creatures. Still in shock, Claudio hears on the radio how the commando is fighting off the infected. When everything stops, he realizes that he has lost another hope of salvation. After sitting in suspense all night, Verona comes to the idea of suicide. He is about to put a bullet in his head when he hears Marcello's already familiar voice. He was able to get into the elevator shaft and climb into the cabin through the ceiling. Sitting on the floor, the men discuss what happened. Marcello is sure that scientists have invented some kind of virus and could not keep it in the walls of the laboratory. He says that in just a couple of hours, the city turned into the abode of bloodthirsty monsters. When it comes to family, Marcello talks about the shelter to which all family members of law enforcement agencies were sent. Claudio, in turn, talks about how he was forced to listen to his wife's death cries. He also says that a few hours before, they had an argument over an ordinary bottle of milk. At that moment, Marcello starts coughing up blood. It turns out that he was injured, and now realizing that he is about to turn into a zombie, he asks a new acquaintance to put him out of his misery. Verona waits until the last one, and when he turns, with tears in his eyes, shoots a bullet into his head. After another day, Claudio, periodically shooting zombies who are trying to get into the elevator, answers a phone call from an unfamiliar number. When he hears his wife's voice, he cannot hold back tears of joy and thanks the Lord that his wife is alive. Lorena says that she managed to run out of the apartment, where she was met by the military and taken to a shelter. At this point, the conversation is interrupted because the phone is running low. Inspired by the fact that the meaning of life is not lost, Claudio knocks out the part that prevented the elevator doors from opening and gets out. He makes his way through the mountains of corpses and goes outside. There, he sees complete devastation and several more zombies. The military covers him from the attackers, giving him the opportunity to get to the shelter. That's how an ordinary elevator breakdown saved a life and gave a seemingly completely lost person a new meaning for existence. This is where the film ends. Thanks for watching, and see you at the next retelling.